Hello, everyone. I am here with Tyson Reed, Director of Product Management for Eventing at Salesforce. So I've heard that there is a lot going on with the event bus runtime. What new problems is your team trying to solve right now? One of the big things that we've been working on is trying to accelerate uh, data cloud and the work that data for cloud is trying to do to bring all of customers' data together. We've probably all seen the, the demos that show event streams that are ingesting that data and then the steps that happen, happen after ingestion. But since we're talking with you and your team that really works with right that ingestion piece, maybe we can talk about what what's actually happening when we see those data streams? That's a big thing of what we're trying to focus on now is how do we make sure that we've got a scalable, simple way to get all of the data and all of the data changes that are happening um, in Salesforce uh, in, in what we traditionally call our, our core application um, and move that into data cloud and our other new services that we're building out. We did another video on this, but if you haven't yeah. seen, we spent a lot of time talking about how data cloud is built on a, a data lake architecture. So we have right our transactional database that we're all used to in Force Core. With data cloud, we have this new um, data lake architecture, and those two databases are essentially separate. What you're saying is that your team is is bridging that gap between those two databases. Is that right? Yeah, absolutely. And and part of what we're trying to do in bridging that gap is um, adopting more streaming approaches, right? So like as you're having these real-time data changes, uh, we're able to catch those and get them into data cloud. So instead of you know moving lots of data um, at a time, you're kind of having a, a constant stream of those changes moving from a Salesforce org into your data cloud. Got it. And is it using, so we have, we know event relays, those have been around for a little while now. Um, also the, the new Salesforce event bus, maybe, you know, like a year, maybe two years that it's it's been around. Have there, are, is Data Cloud just adopting those technologies that we've had for a while, or are there new changes that are being introduced to those tools to accommodate the scale and the, the traffic, of, if you will, of Data Cloud? Yeah, absolutely. So so the short answer is it's a bit of both. Um, but to, to dive in a little bit deeper, uh, you know, ultimately, we we built our new event bus runtime to accommodate these exact kind of high scale use cases that we're going to be taking on with Data Cloud. Um, we knew that customers and other internal teams really needed a lot of access to data. Um, and they needed a, a really high scale runtime that was going to be able to accommodate all of the different events that they needed to publish and then send out to their their subscribers. Um, whether those are subscribers that customers built um, or whether those are subscribers that are within Salesforce that we're using to do all of the different microservice architecture that we need to deliver customer experiences. I had some architects ask me um, when we, they see those great data cloud demos, are we leveraging Salesforce APIs? Like what APIs are we leveraging for those data streams? So for the work that we're doing uh, with, with data cloud right now, um, all of that is leveraging PubSub API. Um, so okay, what it. we're doing is we're taking advantage of all of the subscription management tools that we've we built for PubSub API um, and all of that the kind of developer experience that we've been trying to create. And you know, it's not only being used by customers, but data clouds are running with it That's and awesome. using this to, to build the integration. Now. Sub API. What's the pitch for that? And what's what makes it unique versus yeah. the other APIs we have? Yeah, absolutely. So so PubSub API has been GA since um June of last year, so so getting on to to just about a year now, um, and PubSub API is all about uh, trying to have a, a better experience for building event driven integrations. Um, it's it's really our, our purpose built tool for building system integrations against Salesforce that are that are event driven. Um, kind of the the like, hey, what's new about it? Um, it is a gRPC API, uh, so this is a different API um, protocol that that uh, folks can check out. Um, some of the benefits associated with gRPC APIs is that you can do bi-directional streaming. Um, so it makes it easy now to then not only publish events into Salesforce, but also subscribe to events. Um, in addition, when you're subscribing, you can have this, um, you can have basically a more streamlined back and forth between your PubSub API client mm -hmm. and um, our underlying infrastructure. So part of the thing that's cool about it is like you can you know, you can send these fetch requests to say, hey, I want events, PubSub API sends you the events you want. And then you can kind of have that running dialogue between the uh, the server and the client. That's awesome. Um, so and it yeah. is purpose built for Salesforce and communications with Salesforce and any other any other consumer. Is that correct? 
Yeah, yeah, it's it's purpose built for for working with events that are sitting on Salesforce. So um, you you still need to build a client to interact with PubSub API, um, or you can use uh, the MuleSoft connector. But kind of the the big net new things is that it's easier to work with with events. Um, you get published acknowledgments when you're publishing mm -hmm. against um, the Salesforce event bus, where you say, "Hey, we actually got your event. We actually published it." If we were unable to publish it because we had some underlying infrastructure problem, um, we're going to give you that failure notice right then and there so you can retry the publish. So there's some benefits on the publish side. On the subscriber side, um, we went from having a um, push-based uh, paradigm that we had with the streaming API mm -hmm. to a pull-based one where uh, now you're, you're asking the API for events and then we give them to you. Um, and the, the paradigm there is that it makes it so if there's a huge spike in published traffic because somebody uploaded a CSV with hundreds of thousands of records or there's some big nightly batch job, uh, your, your you know, uh, PubSub API clients don't get flooded with events that are, that are now, you know, being thrown at them and they can't process them fast enough and it causes problems. Definitely. Um, so those are kind of the big net new things with PubSub. So we're connecting those core and near core services with this eventing model. Is that mm -hmm. something that customers are going to need to, to be able to essentially like be aware of, or is that all stuff that's happening behind the scenes? How is a data cloud customer mm -hmm. going to be aware that this is even happening? Yeah. So a lot of what's what's being built these days is happening um, behind the scenes, right? There's a lot of improvements that are going on that a customer is going to um, see in their experience of how they're interacting with Salesforce and and other services they're using eventing behind the scenes. Um, but I think that the the most direct thing that a customer is going to see, especially in the in the data cloud context, is uh, coming up in the fall. We're going to be having a, a pilot that'll be coming up around how you can. Um, enable uh, streaming uh, data sync between your Salesforce org and data cloud. Oh, interesting. Okay, so yeah. is, so that is going to leverage, obviously, the PubSub API. Um, what, what benefits, I guess, is that going to bring to customers versus if someone's a data cloud customer today, um, what's the, the difference that they could expect to see in the pilot? Yeah, so so I think that some of the differences that you're going to see is you're going to get data um, more quickly from your Salesforce org into data cloud. So you're going to see fresher data, um, and and that's that's ultimately going to be one of the most exciting things for customers. Just back to that initial question, I'd love to dig in a little bit deeper. So with data cloud, we're promising you know real time speed with petabyte scale data. So why is your product the one that is going to help solve? this problem. One of the benefits about moving towards an event driven approach is that you really get to harness a lot of scale from some of these underlying technologies like Kafka, um, you know, and, and it allows you to really handle these big changes in data uh, within a system um, and really be able to scale it out. There's a lot going on. How are we coordinating all of these services on the Salesforce side? Yeah, so that's that's a huge challenge in microservice architecture, right? Like, how do you bring together all of the different pieces that you need um, when you need them uh, to deliver the experience that you're trying to create? Um, this has been something that that we've been a part of for a long time at Salesforce and trying to to use events to tie all this together. And one of the things that we did, um, you know, really, I'd say in in the last year, year and a half, is really build out this capability um, that internally we we refer to as system topics. Okay. Um, and ultimately what, what that big innovation was is, uh, you know, we, we've used events in the context of a tenant, uh, for a long time where, you know, Hey, there's, there's, um, a Salesforce org that's publishing events. You know, you've got an account change event. You've got, you know, a custom platform event that's being published in that org context. Mm -hmm. Um, and that's great. That's allowed us to build out a ton of services. Um, what's new with our, our new system topics paradigm is that, um, we're actually not publishing these events in a tenant context. We're publishing them more in a service context. So an example of kind of what is that? How does that work yeah. is um, kind of what we did when we when we built Event Relay. So Event Relay is an off-core service. That means that it's its, it's own little microservice that's that's sitting in, uh, you know, alongside the rest of, of Salesforce. And when somebody goes into setup and says, hey, I'm going to create a new event relay so I can send events to AWS. 
Um, we need a, a system, we need a hook that allows that off-core service, that near-core service, event relay, mm -hmm. to know that it needs to create a relay and start sending those events to AWS. So the way we did that is when somebody goes into setup, their actions result in an event being published that's mm -hmm. listened to by the off-core service. And that that then kicks everything off. Interesting. So that off-core service is the event relay functionality itself. Yeah. And we've been repeating this pattern with system topics as a way to bring all of these microservices together. Um, you know, we, we did it for relay. We we're actually building out some new functionality uh, uh, that's that's going to be surfacing in PubSub API eventually. Um, and then the other big piece is that We've been uh, building out new services to support that uh, streaming data sync project with Data Cloud. Mm -hmm. Excellent. And so walk me yeah. through again, just to make sure I understand. So the system topic yeah. piece, you gave an example of Event Relay as one of those mm -hmm. implementations of a system topic. So what happened, like why, where does the system topic itself come in to play? It's the thing that the consumer subscribes to or where does it fit in in that flow? Yeah, exactly. So, so basically, you can think of it as um, we created um, like a, a topic. So, like a Kafka topic, right? We've mm -hmm. defined a, a a type of event that is, um, hey, this is you know, just for this example, it'll be this is the event relay event. Mm -hmm. um, so, when somebody's taking action in um, inside setup, that's publishing that event, and that's got details like, "Hey, here's here's the org that needs the event. Here's what they're here, here's what they're going to be calling this this new relay that needs to be created." Um, and then the subscriber isn't um, a customer; it's just the services within Salesforce. So all right. of the different event relay cl clusters are then listening for that event, and then they take action when they see that it's there. Got it. So it's something that Salesforce is able to build upon internally yeah. to scale out sort of the actions that are happening across different customers, organizations themselves. Exactly. Did you always have these plans in mind, or was this sort of a natural evolution? I'm confident that like all of these smart architects that I work with already had this in mind, but for, for me, it, it feels like a very natural evolution. Um, and, and I think that for the system topics piece in particular, one of the cool stories about that is we originally built that um, to help us do rate limiting and help us understand mm -hmm. how eventing was working between um, our, our runtime that we have in our core application and this new event bus runtime that we built. Mm -hmm. So initially, like it was just coordinating, hey, what does usage look like across these two runtimes? Right. And um, we we kept building on that. So when we were were building out the event relay service, um, that was one of the things we were like, well, we have this way to sync information and sync metadata between, you know, these two services. What if mm -hmm. we extended that and we use that to coordinate what an event relay needs to do? Oh, that's interesting. So, and and I think that's a great example of right. We're almost building this technology, then we're listening to how it's being used, whether it's how it's being used internally or our customers externally, and that really guides the direction of our products. Thank you so much, Tyson, for your time, and we'll talk to you soon. 